on our show today, we're going to take a deeper look at what Kenyans are still talking a lot about, and that is the recently concluded trial of Joseph Irungu, Joey, and Jackie Maribe over the Monica Kimani murder. And you need to brace yourselves because you're going to dive into some super fascinating, super interesting aspects concerning this trial that has held Kenyans spellbound for over five years. And not only because it involved a well-known face on our televisions, yeah, former news anchor, Jackie Maribe. And not only because it involved state house employee, well-known propaganda peddler, Dennis Itumbi. Those are not the only reasons. Now, Kenyans watch movies a lot. Kenyans are on Netflix a lot. Yeah. And that is entertainment. Not always factual. Not always accurate when you want to compare what you have seen there with what is happening on the ground. Or the reality on the ground. And one question that has disturbed many. Indeed, some of you have posed this question to me directly. Is the question of motive. The Netflix view of some Kenyans is that there was no motive in this instance and therefore there should have been no conviction because there is no motive or nobody came up with a plausible motive. Now although motive is used in very many instances in criminal law to prove a crime, it is used in court to attach to evidence etc etc. The true position is that you do not need motive. It is not a necessity to convict. And with good reason. The human mind is twisted. And in many instances, motive of a crime may not be clear. But it has been committed. And therefore if you can come up with evidence, there is no reason why somebody should not be convicted even when the motive is not clear. Now the other thing we need to be very clear about is that a judge is not an investigator. The work of a judge is to make a determination based on the evidence presented to them. And in my opinion, Justice Grace Zioka did an excellent job in this particular case. And this brings us to the biggest, biggest puzzle by far in this case. Why was Jackie Maribe charged alongside Joey? Why? And she was jointly charged for the murder, meaning they committed the murder together, allegedly. Why? Because it is common knowledge that she had a watertight alibi. All her movements had multiple witnesses throughout the whole period the crime was committed. She was at work and then she proceeded to some other very public places with many, many witnesses seeing her all evening, all night, and it got even more puzzling. When the case started, the prosecution focused on Joey and presenting evidence against him. Yeah, instead of presenting evidence that would convict the two jointly, it just doesn't make sense. And in my opinion, it is also inhuman. You make somebody suffer for five long years. Five years, when things are so clear, you make them suffer for five long years, over five years, waiting to know their fate. 
their life cannot continue. It is difficult to move on until they know the determination. In other words, five years have been taken away from the life of Jackie Maribe and they can never be returned. Now in my opinion, that is strong evidence that there was something else going on here. Yeah. And on my show today, we're going to see a lot of other instances that suggest the same. Now, it is true that Joseph Irungu, Joey, made a lot of very serious mistakes that proved fatal for him. And here there is a lesson even for politicians. Once you establish yourself as somebody who does not tell the truth, then it becomes very difficult, virtually impossible, for people to believe you when you actually tell them the truth. But let us cut to the chase and focus on the main reason why I believe that Joey is innocent. He may be guilty of many other crimes, but definitely not that one of ending the life of Monica. And it is to do with the estimated time of death of Monica Kimani. Now usually in murder cases, this is a very critical piece of information that assists investigators to narrow down their list of suspects during the inquiries. And so, why is the time of death for Monica Kimani unknown in this particular instance? Because the judge told us in our final ruling that the time of demis is unknown. Of course, based on the evidence presented before her. But in this particular instance, it would have been critical in proving Joey's innocence. Because my guess is, it took place when the first accused in this case was in a very, very public place with the eyes of multiple witnesses on him. And here it is interesting that the victim was placed in a bathtub with the water running, clearly telling us that whoever did this knew exactly what they were doing. And they knew that the water will interfere with the ability of forensic pathologists to establish an accurate time of death. You see, the most basic way of being able to establish a time of death is by taking note of the changes to the body. For instance, the body loses. For instance, the body temperature goes down constantly at a rate of about 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit every hour. But when the body is put in water, of course it interferes with this process. It changes it. It delays it, making it that much more difficult to establish the time of death. Think about it. If you wanted to frame somebody, isn't this exactly what you'd want to do? Now, just a quick heads up on my mini-series, How to Survive or Even Prosper in a Dead Economy. Information that I believe is key, vital, very essential for all of us. In this season, we are in. And my last special offer ended last night at midnight. And now only for this Sunday up to midnight, I have a super special offer of only Kenya shillings 1,900 for the whole package. Yeah, you know we have people who cannot accept to be sponsored. And the price was a little steep for them. Therefore you need to rush, take advantage of these few hours before midnight and get your hands on this very valuable information. You can see details on your screens right now. Go for it. In my opinion, the time of death in the Monica Kimani case would have been the only way of proving Joey's innocence. 
Indeed, in a case like this, where it would appear that there are many different powerful forces yeah, fighting against Joey, that would be the only way of proving his innocence. You know, there was another very super fascinating case in Kenya in the year 1978, where somebody was framed and put at the scene of the crime. And of course, I'm talking about the case of David Kisila versus the state. Major David Kisila had a fiancé, Captain Judy Angaine, who was also in the military, with him. And in this particular case, the state even had very plausible motive for Major Kisila to have ended the life of his fiancé. She had multiple men in her life, including no less than two cabinet ministers, full cabinet ministers. And therefore, according to state council at the time, a Mr. William Bayer, this was an open and shut case, very strong motive. Therefore, Kisila did it. However, fortunately, legendary, very sharp mind defense lawyer, Byron Jojadis told the court that for the very same reasons the state had given, it also meant that all those other men were also suspects. All the men in her life would have a motive, not only the good major. But in the end, Jojadis won that case mainly because the time of death was established which was between 10.30 and 11 a.m. And Major Kisila was acquitted and continued with his career in the army and even rose to be a colonel yeah, before he retired from the military. To be fair, Joey's lawyers also presented to the court very similar arguments, including an SMS from the phone of the deceased yeah, with a very suggestive message yeah, to a man saying kuja unisaidie kulala but obviously that by itself was not enough to save joey it is rather obvious that joey did a lot of very very suspicious things and those things in the end nailed him including being a serial liar however it is my hope and prayer that there'll be an appeal on this because surely there is no greater injustice than somebody having to pay for a crime they did not commit. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.